hear about the uh, Miracle Village of, in Ohio. Lucille Fleming and Claire Freeman will make those presentations. And I sincerely wish I had three hours, but I know I don't. <laughs> I'm Lucille Fleming, the director of the cabinet level department of alcohol and drug addiction services in Ohio. I'm taking 10 seconds of my time to put a plug in with such influential people because this is the structure every state should have. That's when you can get things done. There are six of us so far. You know from your reading that Miracle Village is a treatment center for women and their children inside a housing project in inner city Cleveland. And just to be sure that we had loaded it sufficiently with difficulty, a policy decision was made to take homeless women not women from other parts of housing projects. Only homeless. Only homeless women, to start with. We'll see how it develops. In the late 80s, everybody decided that crack was not treatable. Everybody decided, and by everybody, I don't mean you, I mean the ordinary person who got plain sick of hearing about the needs of drug addicts. You can't treat somebody who's addicted to crack. Nobody gets well. If everybody would just pull up their socks and behave, we wouldn't have these problems, and on and on. We decided to tackle this head on. The barriers to women recovering are higher than any other segment of the population because their problems are so enormous. They have usually lost their children. They have almost insurmountable gynecological problems. They have no training or education. Frequently, they come to us from the streets. And you're starting below ground zero. So what we want to tell you today is about our successes at Miracle Village, where we have successfully treated, out of the 117 who've come through, 87 women in the first two years who are clean and sober, 300 and some children who have been brought back from child welfare care, brought back from grandparents, and so forth. And we have reunited those families. This is a, this is a project that, that covers everything. That doesn't count against my time, I presume. No, you can keep going. <laughs> 325 children have gone through the program. This is a, this is a fabulous success. And these, these results come only from marvelous collaboration. And the person that I think is most responsible for the success is Claire Freeman. She has she is the head of the Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority, and she has lent flexibility and clout and eternal support. Claire? When I was approached by a headhunter to um, take over the Metropolitan um, Housing Authority in, in uh, Cuyahoga, in the county of Cuyahoga, um, I talked with the various uh, Congress people, et cetera, and I said to them, I know a lot about management, I know a lot about housing, I know nothing about crack cocaine addiction, and it looks to me like that's the major problem, problem facing uh, public housing in this country. As I drove around the housing authority and the neighborhoods that, um, it was, uh, that we found the housing in, I saw children two and three and four years old out at two and three and all hours of the night, and I asked, where are the mothers? Um, I was also told by the schools that um, because we evict these families for non-payment, that they, the children are extremely mobile. They change schools frequently. So in, in talking to the community leaders, um, and then we had a, a funding opportunity from HHS and from the state. We applied jointly, that is, with Metro Health 
and CMHA for a residential drug treatment uh, program for women and their children at CMHA. The biggest uh, thing that we learned, though, um, is that this is more of a program for children. This is just as much as a program for children as it is for the mothers. Thank you. Thank you. We've now reached the question uh, period, and we'll start with Antonia. Uh, considering that the program is so expensive, is it reasonable to expect that it's replicable? Um, it is extremely uh, reasonable to expect that it's replicable. It, it may look expensive in that it's um, 1300 uh, $1, some odd dollars uh, for the first year, but let me tell you, CMHA's money, for example, that's normal comprehensive grant uh, modernization money that we, we get about $37 million a year through a formula. That money will continue to, to come. We can renovate units as we did for the first um, uh, Miracle Village um, model. We intend to use uh, comp grant money, though, for the second uh, Miracle Village program in our county. But I also know that we can buy buildings separate and apart from existing public housing. Um, uh, we can buy buildings that need a renovation, or we can buy already existing well-managed buildings. That money is there, and it will be there for as long as Congress deems, it, uh, uh, deems that we do a good job with it. Secondly, uh, the Miracle Village program has recently been certified by the state of Ohio to bill uh, Medicaid and, and Medicare um, for the drug treatment of um, uh, services, so they will be able, and, and uh, private insurance, so they will be able to um, to have an ongoing program of uh, ambulatory or, or, or a residential, whether or not there is funding for this. The major expense of this kind of program is the facility. We provide, that is the housing authority, provides the, the, the uh, capital improvement money for the facility. We do not expect to be reimbursed. Additionally, we provide uh, uh, provide two-thirds of the security, which is another important variable. We do not expect to be reimbursed. Um, we, w the uh, residents pay rent, and they buy their own food through their normal uh, uh, welfare uh, budgeting process. And all of the other services, from the uh, jobs training services, I think we pay for the, uh, the uh, friendly in, uh, settlement daycare out of the grant, we, we pay for a, a, um, a social worker at, at the, uh, the uh, voc uh, uh, vocational guidance center, minimal amount of money. Um, the, uh, the human services department, um, uh, it's, it's mainly a partnership of many different social service agencies that um, would be providing these services to, to these eligible um, individuals, families in any case, but we have created a, a, a setting where it is comprehensive and holistic. We have time for just one quick question and a quick response, and that will be mm -hmm. Max. When you mentioned the 87 women who've been through the program and the 325 children, uh, and yet it's a relatively new program, uh, how do you determine that those are successes? Because they continue to be with us but moved into a different level. And if they maintain their drug-free and sober status, then they move into a different section equally under our eye and come back to the program for counseling, supervision, guidance, advice. One thing I, I neglected to mention, I'd like to, and I know time is short. You're OK. Uh, we've still got, I've discovered a little more time. OK. For you. Uh, the women themselves, although Claire and Anne, who runs the program, had, <clears throat> had planned to try to start an alumni association, which, as you know, is always the quick and dirty way to decide if a program's any good, the women started it themselves. And the first reunion where all the kids came back was something I wish you could have seen. If I could share quickly, we, we are intending, uh, we have applied for a grant to study the, uh, uh, the uh, long-term term resiliency of the children. We believe